in some categories of work, or their entire departments, like the nutrition departments at FDA, that are that have to go. Here are some interesting insights, I'll tell you, into how Bobby Kennedy intends to govern the FDA. What's being suggested is nothing short of a total clear out. And what's fascinating about this is to watch how the legacy media is having to come to terms with the fact that Bobby Kennedy was right about a lot of stuff that they were undermining, denying, lying, censoring and shutting down. This could be a fantastic moment for all of us. Firstly, let's have a look at Bobby Kennedy telling MSNBC that he's going to clear out the entire FDA, or at least whole departments of it. And then let's look at Van Jones, one of the CNN pundits, who I believe to be a really good person, actually. I met him once, and he was really, really lovely. Under having a kind of personal awakening. Let me know in the comments and chat what you think about that. Here's Bobby Kennedy, first of all. You say clearing out the corruption in your terms. Would that mean clearing out the top level federal service workers that are currently at the FDA and the CDC? In some categories, I would say. What does that look like? Yeah. In some categories of work, or their entire departments, like the nutrition departments at FDA, that are that have to go, um, that are are not doing their job. They're not protecting our kids. Why do we have Fruit Loops in this country that have 18 or 19 ingredients, and you go to Canada and it's got two or three? Would you eliminate any of the agencies? I, I'm, 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 I, to eliminate the agencies as long as it requires congressional approval, I wouldn't be doing that. But I can get the corruption out of the agencies. This is what I've been doing for 40 years. I've sued all those agencies. I have a PhD in corporate corruption, and that's what I do. And once they're not corrupt, once Americans are getting good science and are allowed to make their own choices, they're going to get a lot healthier. A PhD in corporate corruption. I feel like I could get one of those now. Don't you feel like you've been educated in corporate corruption over the last few years? Don't you think that sort of since the sort of celebrity president phenomena began, was that with Bill Clinton? Certainly they doubled down with Obama. It's been... What that has masked, those uh, glistening avatars at the front of government, has been deep, deep corruption and abandonment of ordinary people. Is that what you feel? That's what I feel. So with our man Bobby Kennedy having a PhD in corruption, he's going to have his work cut out at the FDA. What fascinates me most of all is watching the pivots and analysis of legacy media as they seek to understand the new landscape that they find themselves in. Here, as far as I understand, because I've not watched the clip yet, Van Jones is talking about how Bobby Kennedy is like right about a lot. Yesterday we talked about like Colbert like ridiculing Bobby Kennedy for some of his evident and obvious eccentricities. But what's really important is the subject of American health and uh, nutrition and agriculture and farming and the ridiculous power of big pharma, which you know the left would have agreed about and with not so long ago during the sort of Sackler family's role in the opioid crisis, for example. Why did they participate in that scandalous affair of amplifying the power of Big Pharma, turning Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson into heroes, willingly accepting what was at the end of their fork and at the end of that spike without inquiry and question? I'm still fascinated by it. Let's see what Van Jones has got to say about Bobby Kennedy here. I mean, we were talking in the break about, um, you know, there are a lot of Americans who are concerned about health and safety, whether regulations are really keeping up with the information, whether or not uh, their food is safe, their water is safe, that is being co-opted by people who want to make a conspiracy out of everything. And what do you think uh, uh, about how that should be addressed? I mean, even after all of this? Well, look, I think that I think progressives make a mistake when we just roll our eyes and just kind of throw everybody in the same you know, crazy bucket when people ask tough questions. I think you have low trust voters and you have high trust voters. And low trust voters are also on the progressive side. You have voters who say, listen, all these experts have been telling me stuff that turned out not to be true. They gave me a housing bubble that wiped out all my assets. Uh, they had my kid go fight in a war that was dumb. Uh, you know, I don't believe everything that we were told during COVID served my child well in his or her school. So you do have people who have said, look, experts have let us down. And so I think that the mistake we make is then here comes RFK Jr. on the nutty train. And all we do is throw rocks at him, as opposed to saying, you know what? 
if there's evidence, there's been some corporate capture of some of these, these, these uh, uh, agencies. As Democrats, we should go after that. We should actually grab this mantle. We want to make sure that kids are, are safety. We don't necessarily, you know, uh, 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 brush moms aside if they, I don't know, I'm concerned. I think progressives are making a big mistake. We have left these uh, parental concerns for the right wing to exploit. And I think that we should take them seriously, but not give into the crisis. I, I do think that you're, you're right about that. Hey, don't you think that's the kind of analysis that's required over on those kind of legacy media outlets? A little bit of open heartedness, a little bit of albeit too late mere culpa. Recognition that immediately fixating on the idea that Bobby Kennedy is some kind of lunatic rather than a man with a PhD in corporate corruption might be exactly the kind of transformation that's required. My personal belief is it's too late for the legacy media. We don't need New York Times. We don't need CNN. We don't need BBC, MSNBC, The Times. We don't need them anymore. We know what they exist for. They exist to serve the interests of the powerful. You cannot serve the interests of the powerful without the pretense that you're somehow serving the populari, the population, ordinary people, claiming to bring them information that might titillate them, claiming to protect them from imaginary threats, creating threats where there were none. Those days are over. Let me know in the comments and chat if you agree with that, that the legacy media should lose any kind of support that it gets, that there should be real scrutiny into where they get their advertising revenue, that they should get no support on platforms like YouTube, that this is a new era, that they should be banished, vanquished, closed down and lost, that they should know exile because all they've done is serve deep darkness. Once in a while, they'll pull up a claim, but didn't we expose this corruption? That was Watergate, baby. That was a long, long time ago. Since since Assange, you've been doing nothing but working for the man and you've been working hard, only on your knees, never to pray, only to serve the diabolical fellatio that they perform almost continually. It's time for them to be ended. It's time for them to be closed down. Where they're supported by tax, it should be foreclosed. Where they have relationships with corporations, it should be investigated. Where they lie about people, it should be exposed. End this pretense. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. Look at who gives them money. Look at who invests. If they're connected to the Epsteins and to the people that seem to be able to conjure up great revenue for philanthropic dones, look it up. Shut them down. It's a new era now. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, of course, you know you got to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And ultimately, we want you over on Rumble where we have been guaranteed we can say whatever we want. And so can you too. Use that free speech to elevate us as iron sharpens iron. Not to drag us down into a quagmire of empty quarreling. But more important than any of that, if you can, of course, please stay free. Let's be honest. Most K cup Pods are serving you mouldy, pesticide-laden rubbish. Chains like Dunkin', they're stinking the place out with their stale coffee and expecting you to say cheers. 1775 Coffee makes sure you don't have to drink a chemical soup when you want a caffeine lift. 1775 Coffee steps in to slap the mediocrity right out of the competition. Their K-Cup pods are filled with single-origin, high-altitude beans hand-picked by people who know what flavour actually is. It's coffee that will slap your brain fast awake. Faster, in fact, than a government scandal. Who doesn't need an injection of this new caffeine inflection? Kamala Biden? Get this stuff down here. Yeah. You've got a choice of medium roast, dark roast, and mushroom blend. Yeah, actual mushrooms like lion's mane and reishi to boost your brain power as well as giving you an immediate lift. Because let's be honest, if your coffee isn't strong enough to overthrow a small government, what's the point? This coffee is for people who don't want a participation trophy. This is coffee for winners. Go to 1775coffee.com, grab your 24-pack and tell corporate coffee to take a hike. That's go to 1775coffee.com, Grab your 24 pack and tell corporate coffee to take a hike. Caffeine that will help you overthrow the powerful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.